Hello everyone and welcome back to IMO Reviews. Today we are discussing the latest picture by Martin Scorsese, Killers of the Flower Moon. Killers of the Flower Moon is based on the true story of the Osage murders, following the story of Ernest and Molly Burkhart, as many suspicious deaths start to unfold around them. So diving straight into the positives of Killers of the Flower Moon, I have been very excited to see this movie. It has been on my most anticipated list for several years, not just this year, because I remember this being announced back in 2018, I think it was originally, and it's a story that's always interested me, always captivated me, me and always made me think that would make for a fantastic movie. And I can gladly say that Killers of the Flower Moon did not disappoint in that regard. In true Scorsese fashion, he is delivering some interesting, deep and thought out, fleshed out characters that are interesting to follow and aren't straightforward cookie cutter characters. They're complicated. And that just made it all the more engaging to follow as this drama unfolded. I also enjoyed how deeply it got into the roots of the Osage tribe. What their traditions are, what their beliefs are, what they stand for as a people. I thought it was both respectful and interesting in that regard. And I thought it did a fantastic job of bringing the time period to life. Performances are sensational, as you may expect. Leonardo DiCaprio does a fantastic job holding this together as a very complicated character in earnest. First time actor Lily Gladstone absolutely stole the screen at every opportunity as Molly Burkhart. I cannot wait to see what other projects she takes on in the future. But I've got to be honest, the guy who really stole the show for me and I think is worthy of a Best Actor nomination is Robert De Niro. He was endlessly magnetic in this film. His dialogue was sharp, it was witty, it was interesting, it was well written. The cinematography was sensational. There were several shots in this movie that really caught my eye and made me sit back and go, wow. The practicality of it all, the set design, the costume, it really has brought this film to life. I should also compliment the sound design and score. It's very catchy. I found myself bopping my head along to this very invasive music. It's beautifully done and it does feel fitting to the themes of the Film. This story really did have me hooked and gripped and that's a huge compliment because I did already know this story going in. This could have bored me to death, I could have just been waiting for plot beats to happen and yet I wasn't. And that's also another positive to Killers of the Flower Moon, having already known the story, they do portray this story very respectfully and very honestly. But unfortunately I do have just a handful of issues with Killers of the Flower Moon. Two in particular but they're quite big problems. The first one is quite obvious because everyone's complaining about it. It's the runtime. You know me, I'm actually all for a long runtime. It's no skin off my nose as long as it's entertaining and you can justify that runtime. There's a reason why I will gladly dive into the Lord of the Rings extended cuts over the theatrical cuts. Despite being an hour longer, you just get more for it, and it does feel like it's rewarding you for giving it the patience that it deserves. And I can't say that about Killers of the Flower Moon. The longer this went on, I felt myself retroactively editing the film while it was playing out before me. I may have enjoyed this first act and thought this was great, but considering we're now three hours in and we're only just entering the final act, yeah, I'm now looking back at that scene I really liked and thinking, we didn't need that. That could have been cut, that could have been cut, we could have trimmed out that intro. Which is annoying because I can see a 10 out of 10 movie in there and it's so nearly at the surface if Scorsese could have just killed his darlings and cut some bits here and there. And I'm not even mad about it because some of my favourite scenes in this movie are scenes that are not needed. I won't spoil it, but there is one very small scene in here that I thought was so beautiful. It was so moving. It made my lip wobble. It really touched me. But looking back on it, do we need that scene? No, not at all. But I also wouldn't cut it because it is genuinely my favorite scene in the film. And my other issue is the ending of the movie. And no, again, I won't go into spoilers, but it does link in with the runtime and the pacing of the film. It felt tacked on. It didn't feel fleshed out. It actually felt a bit sickly, if I'm being honest. I didn't appreciate what Scorsese was going for with that wrap up. It felt way too disconnected to everything else we've been shown. And honestly, I'd rather we just stayed in the pocket and saw it out. It kind of felt like Scorsese was trying to make it about himself and I don't think that's what he was trying to do but it does come across that way. I find it hard to believe that you can have a three hour and 20 minute long runtime and you're still gonna butcher the ending so quickly? I don't like that. I don't mind you cutting to black and showing text if you've got a 90 minute runtime. That kind of makes sense. You're not gonna fit everything in but you've got three and a half hours here 
How are you not fitting everything in? And this is just a running issue that I have with Scorsese. I love the guy. He is easily in my top three directors of all time. But Jesus Christ, if I ever have a consistent complaint with his movies is that nine times out of ten, they're always 20 to 30 minutes too long. And what he needs is an editor that's going to be way sterner with him and put their foot down and say, Marty, you cannot do this. And I don't feel like he has that. And it really does show, especially in his last three, four projects. Wolf of Wall Street, too long. Irishman, too long. He does need to learn to cut his darlings and know what to keep and what not to keep. He needs to learn to make that tough decision that I love this scene, but it's just not serving a purpose here. But apart from that, Killers of the Flower Moon is easily one of the best movies I've seen this year. Performances are outstanding. Set design, costume, music, all of it is top tier. And all of it is a clear indicator as to why Martin Scorsese is heralded so highly in cinema. He really is a master of what he does. He's fantastic to bring these timepieces to life. He's really good at getting the best performance out of his actors. His dialogue is always sharp. It always builds an interesting character. And despite the lengthy runtime, I cannot lie, I was fully immersed and gripped to this film. At least for the first two acts, third act got a little bit wobbly. So I'm going to give Killers of the Flower Moon a nine out of 10. Thank you for watching this review. Please be sure to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And please do hit the comment section as well. Have you seen Killers of the Flower Moon? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comment section below. And of course, if you haven't had enough of this crazy ginger, well, you can always click on these suggested videos right here and get yourself lost in an IMO wormhole. But if not, take care, and I look forward to seeing you on the next review.